Just like trees, vehicle models are often complex with very high poly counts, making Forest Pack the perfect way to add them to your scenes. In this tutorial, we're going to look at how to prepare your assets, randomize colors, and scatter vehicles to populate roads and car parks using areas, splines, and markers. You'll find that most car models you purchase require a little preparation before they can be used with Forest Pack. These types of models are usually divided into several parts and they're grouped. And while Forest Pack can import group geometry, it isn't intended to be used for this purpose. The first step, therefore, is to ensure that each car model is combined into a single object. You have two choices, either attach the parts together into a single editable mesh or export the model to a proxy object. Generally speaking, our recommendation is to use proxies if your system is getting low on RAM. But each project is different, so it can be a good idea to test both methods for a specific configuration, especially when creating huge scenes. We'll illustrate how to convert the Maserati car model provided in the downloads for this tutorial to a proxy object, and then we'll look at the alternative, how to combine the grouped objects into a single mesh. In this example I'm going to be using V-Ray, but similar steps will be applicable for other renderers. So to get started, I'm going to open up the car sample file that we've provided in this download. Select the car object or objects and then right click. Select your renderer's export to proxy feature. If these options are available, turn on export as a single file, automatically create proxies and most important of all, create multi sub object material. Finally, choose a path and file name and click export. This is now ready to use. We have a single object with a single material and that's what we need to work with Forest Pack. However, if you prefer not to use with proxies or if your renderer's proxy export process doesn't automatically generate a multi-sub object material, you can simply attach the meshes together to create a single object. To do this, select the car and go to Edit Group, Ungroup. Select any part of the ungrouped car now and convert it to an editable poly if it isn't already. Go to the Modify panel and click on the Attach List button. Select all the remaining car parts and then click Attach. At this point you'll be presented with Attach options. These are important as they allow you to automatically generate a new multi-sub-object material for the car and automatically remap the geometry's material IDs. Make sure that the default settings of Match Material IDs to Material and Condense Material and IDs are both selected. And then click OK. You now have a single object. And if you open the material editor and use the eyedropper to pick the material from the object, you'll also see that the new material has been generated and that the material has been reassigned to match the new model. Whichever technique you use to convert the car to a single model, another important consideration is the position of the pivot point and its alignment in relation to the world axis. It may seem trivial, but this actually has an effect on two features that can be very useful when placing vehicles. As we'll see, in this tutorial we're going to use the center offset and horizontal mirroring features to position and randomize the cars, and in order for this to work correctly, the cars must be aligned so that they point along the world's x-axis. You may therefore need to rotate your car model by 90 degrees. Finally, you'll also need to place the pivots. To a certain extent, where you place these depends on how you intend to scatter the cars. For example, if you intend to create splines at the top of the parking spaces, you might put the pivots at the ends of the cars. Alternatively, you might put the spline through the middle of the car parking spaces, in which case you'd want to put the pivot in the middle of the car as well. In fact, I recommend this latter approach because you can easily adjust the pivot to the start or the end of the vehicle using the center displace property which can be found in Forest Pack's geometry rollout. With the pivot in the center of the object, and using this simple parameter, you can slide the anchor point along the length of the car without having to edit the source model. It offers the most flexibility for reusing your models in a number of different scenarios. It's unusual that every parked car faces the same direction, so you can use the horizontal mirroring feature found at the bottom of the transform rollout to randomly flip cars over the spline. This works best when the center displace is set to 50% and the car's pivot is in the middle of the car. Otherwise, the cars will flip from one side of the line to the other. Scattering many makes and models of car can create some really nice randomization, but being able to scatter cars in many different color combinations allows us to get so much more from our limited assets and really helps to disguise visible repetition. Most car models you can buy can be easily adapted to use forest color, and here's how I'd go about this using our sample car. We want to get the material off the object, so pick the multi sub object material from the car using the material picker and find the material that's used for the car's bodywork. In the example file, it's conveniently called car paint. 
The current material uses blend maps, but for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to change this to a V-Ray car paint material. Other renderers will be different, but it shouldn't matter what material type you use, the important part is that we're going to add forest colour maps to the slots that control the car's paint colour. So I'm going to very quickly set this material up by changing the base reflection to 0.7, the base glossiness to 0.55, I'm going to scroll down and set the coat strength to 0.1 and the coat glossiness to 0.98 and I'm going to zero all the flake layer parameters since we won't see this effect from the kinds of distances we're going to be rendering. I'm now going to add a fall off map to the base color map slot and select the mode to Fresnel. Click on the first map slot and add a new forest color map. This is what we'll use to randomize the colors. And according to Maserati's website, this model comes in 10 possible colors. Of course, it may not be that important to your visualization exactly how accurately you match the actual colours of the specific models of cars, but we're going to use these as a reference for this example. So first let's load a reference image to sample colours from. Add a new bitmap and load the Maserati Colours JPEG from the downloads for this tutorial. We'll pick colours from this map. Go back and select the forest colour map and check all the map slots to enable them. And then for each map slot, click on the colour swatch to open the colour selector and then sample a paint colour from the reference image. Do this for all 10 slots and by the time you've finished you should have 10 colour samples. Change get item ID from to item, this will generate a new random colour per car. And you can also change the probability of a colour being selected using the percentage spinners to the right of the map slots. For example, if we wanted fewer white cars, you'd set the probability to a low value like say 10%. With that done, go back to the fall off map and add a colour correct map to the second map slot. Instance the forest colour map into the colour correct input. This is the colour that will be seen at the grazing angles, so we'll just adjust it a bit to give the paint effect a bit more depth. You'll only see the effects of this once you add the car to a forest object. Once you've done it, click render and you'll now have a car with several randomised colour variations. If you want to add more than 10 colour variations, instead of using the slots in the maps rollout, you can instead choose to randomly select colours from a map. To do that, you activate Tint Override, set the random strength minimum and maximum to 100%, and then turn on Get Colour from Map and Random Values. Because we want to completely replace the existing colour, change the blending mode to Normal, and click on the Get Colour from Map Map slot and add a gradient ramp. We're going to use the gradient ramp to add a series of solid colours. It lets us keep everything inside 3ds Max and you also have the advantage of being able to control the probability based on the size of the colour in the gradient. So to do this, set the gradient ramp's interpolation to solid and then add a new flag for each colour variation. The amount, of, like I say, the amount of space you give each colour determines the probability of it being selected. Alternatively, of course, you can create a simple swatch in an image editing package and use this as a colour source. For example, this is the swatch used on the Audi A3 in the example scene. It uses only 10 by 10 pixels for each colour variation. If we add this to the Maserati and render it using this colour map, this is what we get. In the downloads for this tutorial, you'll find a few other example swatches that you can use with other car models. So now that the car has been prepared, we're ready to look at some different approaches that we can use to distribute it. Before looking at how to populate the car park shown in the scene file, I first wanted to mention a quick way of filling areas with cars using grid-like patterns. This isn't much use if you have parking arrangements that are more complex, but for filling large areas like airport parking for aerial shots, this might be all you need. So Forest Pack comes with a number of distribution patterns. You're not limited to using these options, as you can easily create your own. To do this, it's helpful to understand exactly how they work. In the distribution rollout, you can click on the bitmap slot to select a new distribution map. This will open the default directory where Forest Pack's built-in maps are saved, so we can take a look at them. And the first thing you'll notice is that, is that these maps are small, only 100 by 100 pixels. That's because each pixel represents a potential scattered object. If a pixel is white, a scattered object is created, and if it's black, it's just left empty. This means that though each map is only 100 pixels square, it actually has the potential to place 10,000 objects. Most of these are intended to create a chaotic distribution pattern, but a few might be useful for distributing cars. For example, the full map has no black areas, so it creates a dense grid of objects. By adjusting the density X and Y units, it's possible to create single rows of cars. 
And you might also find the horizontal and vertical rows and grid patterns are useful for these kinds of geometric layouts. Alternatively, you can create your own custom distribution maps. For example, if we want to create two rows of cars with a space in between, you could easily create a map like this with double columns of dots. This creates a distribution of cars similar to found in large car parks. Just adjust the density X and Y values to get the desired spacing. That said, it's seldom the case that car parks are so conveniently arranged. Aside from filling huge areas like airport parking, it's not likely these grid-based layouts are going to work for your designs. Take the car park layout in the sample file, for example, which is more horseshoe shaped in plan view. With layouts like this, the easiest way to distribute cars is by positioning them along splines. In Forest Pack, you can do this using tree editor mode, and you have two options. You can either distribute objects at regularly spaced intervals, or you place them precisely on vertices. If your parking spaces are exactly the same width, then the fastest way to place your cars is using distance mode. And to do this, follow these steps. First we're going to start with the car park start max file from the downloads for this tutorial and we need to import the car model we prepared earlier. Whether you import it as a proxy, an xref or simply merge it into the scene is up to you. To illustrate the technique I'll start with just a small area called yellow parking lines that can be found to the left of the scene when in top view. It's 10 simple car parking spaces originally created with Railclaim. We need to create a spline to place the cars in these parking bays. Understanding how Forest Pack scatters along splines will help you to place them accurately. So the first object will be placed on the spline's first vertex and then at regularly spaced intervals measured from that point along the spline. This means that the spline should be created so that it starts halfway along the first parking space and finishes halfway along the last parking space. If you want to use the mirroring tip mentioned earlier, the spline should also cut through the middle of the spaces, not at the top or the bottom. You also need to know or to measure the width of a single parking space, and in this example it's 2.5 meters. So now that we've created our spline and we know this dimension, we can create a new forest pack object, go to the geometry rollout, and add the car model. For greater variety in this video, I'm going to add some additional models that I've already added to my library so I can add them easily. If you're interested in doing this and creating your own libraries, then you can check out the Creating Libraries tutorial from our website. With the cars added, go to the Tree Editor rollout and turn on Custom Edit Mode. Scroll down to the Creation Tools and click None next to Along a Path and then select the spline we just created. Activate Spacing Mode and enter the width of the single parking space for the distance. This is 2.5 meters. Ensure follow path is active so that the cars orientate to follow the path and then click create. You now have cars following the path but you can see they are fo following the path along their length so they need to be rotated. To do this go to the transform rollout, activate rotation, enter a value of 85 degrees for the minimum Z value and 95 degrees for the maximum Z. The deviation either side of 90 gives you a little rotation randomization to help improve realism. The cars are now rotated correctly, but they're all facing the same way. So to randomly flip them over the spline, turn on Enable Horizontal Mirror, found at the bottom of the transform rollout. And finally, add a little position variation by turning on Translation and setting the minimum values for the X and Y axis to minus 5 and the maximum values to 5. Be aware that translation takes place in world space, so smaller values work best. In some cases, car parking spaces are not all the same size, perhaps, for example, because they're a mixture of standard mother and child or disabled spaces, or perhaps because the person that drew them in Photoshop was a bit sloppy. So anyway, another option to ensure that cars are placed accurately in the bays is to add additional vertices to the splines and then place a car on each vertex. To illustrate this, we'll add a few vertices to the existing splines in the car park scene. So with the same scene still open, select the spline called spline car parking and then go to the vertex sub object mode you'll find there's a spline that has yet to have any vertices added this is the one that we're going to edit and to do that you select the refine tool and click on the middle of each parking bay to add a vertex it's very fast and easy once you've done that just go back to your car forest pack object and back to the tree editor mode click the along path spline picker and then select this spline but importantly, you need to change the mode to in vertex positions and then click create. You now have cars in all the parking bays, which is fine, this car park is full, but let's imagine that we need a few spaces. So to do this, go to the geometry rollout and click plus to add a new geometry item, but we don't need to pick anything from the scene. 
Instead, we'll just change the property to disabled, which will prevent the geometry from showing, but it will still be used when calculating the distribution, thus creating gaps. To change the number of gaps or spaces, you can edit the probability value of the cars and the space objects. And then to see the results of this and update the scatter, you just need to go back into the tree editor rollout and click create. And that's it, now we've placed all our parked cars, let's add some traffic to the roads. For more sophisticated layouts, you may want to use markers. These could be imported from CAD data or created in 3ds Max using other tools. In this example, I'm going to demonstrate using RailClone to create traffic markers that ForestPack can then use to place vehicles. This gives you the advanced spline-based arrays of RailClone, but coupled with the material management advantages of ForestPack. I'm not going to go into how the RailClone object is created in this tutorial, but the style is included if you're a RailClone user and you'd like to examine how it works. The important thing to note though is that the RailClone object's display mode is set to mesh and that the markers are triangles that have a definite direction. There are already a couple of rail clone objects creating markers in the scene in the car park. We'll illustrate how this was done by adding markers to the overpass. So to do that, you can follow these steps. Select the object called rail clone markers overpass and then open the base objects rollout. Assign the spline overpass as a path. This rail clone object has a number of values accessible from the parameters rollout so that you can use it easily without having to understand the graph. So first let's use this to increase the center offset value until the triangles are in the first lanes on either side. There are three lanes on either side, so change the number of lanes to three, and increase the lane width value until the triangles are placed correctly in the remaining two lanes. If you want to make further adjustments, you can use the change direction to flip the direction of car, the direction the cars are traveling. You can change the car spacing to adjust the distances between vehicles and add some side to side randomization with lane wiggle. It's as simple as that, so with our markers set up, we'll now use them to place the cars. To do this, duplicate the existing cars forest pack object and rename it forest pack traffic. Go to this object's geometry rollout and delete the object that's being used to create empty spaces, since we want a car on every marker in this example. Go to the transform rollout and turn off translation and rotation and enable horizontal mirror, as the alignment is being handled by the markers. And then go to Tree Editor Rollout and go to the Reference Objects section and click Select Objects. Pick the free Rail Clone Marker objects in the scene and click Create. Now, change the distribution mode to face centers and ensure that alignment is turned on. And finally, to place the cars, click the Create button and a vehicle will now be placed on each marker. We're nearly done, but once you've scattered all your cars, you still might want to make some manual adjustments. Fortunately, this is easy in Forest's tree editor mode. Because to edit individual items, you just click on the tree icon or select the tree sub-object level, and then individual objects can be moved, rotated, scaled, and cloned, just like regular objects. And you can do some extra things. To randomly pick a different car model from the geometry list, you just click the randomize button. If you want to reseed random values like transform or color, click the reseed button. Or if you'd rather change an object to a specific item instead of a random one, you can use the properties drop down list. And finally, to add new cars, use the add button and just click in the scene. You can either randomly assign an item or specify which one to add using the properties drop down list. For example, we can use these tools and simply click to add two new cars under the bridge. When you're done, just change the view to the camera, click render to see the final result. And as you can see, in this tutorial, we've covered many tricks for adding cars to your scenes, including a detailed look at some of the tools in tree editor mode. I hope that as well as this application, you'll be able to find many other uses for these tools. And if you create an interesting project using these techniques, please feel free to share it on our forum. Meanwhile, keep an eye on our site and social media for even more forest pack and rail clone training coming soon. And for more information about the features demonstrated in this tutorial, check out our reference section or visit the tutorials page for more tips and tricks videos and in-depth tutorials.